So today I thought I'd take a closer look at this uh, power meter thing that I got in a recent mailbag. Um, maybe take a peek inside and see what makes it tick. I'll test it against a couple of other things and just see how accurate it is. So on the back of it here it says it's capable of uh, reading voltage from 110 to 130, which is reasonable for North America, um, up to 15 amps current, uh, up to 1800 watts, um, and then calculating kilowatt hours and costs and stuff. I'm not that concerned about that stuff. It claims to be CAT2 insulated, which I guess is reasonable enough. Um, don't recycle it. CE and Nurtec uh, symbols on it. Whether or not those are legitimate, who knows? You can never be too sure when you're buying this stuff from China. Actually, I think I'll take a peek inside it first and then we'll test it out afterwards. That sounds fair. So there's three Phillips screws holding it together. They're in there fairly tight too, but we got them. And it should just separate along that seam. Maybe with a little bit of gentle persuasion from one or another spudger. Uh, I think I'm going to do it this way so the buttons don't fall out. Nope. Okay. So, well, let's look at this back here first. We've got the AC input on this little module here, which, can it pop out? Yeah, it can. So I guess, yeah, when I bought this from eBay, um, there were various different uh, versions of it. Uh, EU, North America, Australia, that's, uh, UK, etc. So I'm guessing that that little insert and this little insert here just pop out so they can drop a different one in. So on the board, there's the current shunt as a crystal. Hmm. And there is a little battery here. Nickel metal hydride, so it's rechargeable. 3.6 volts, 20 milliamp hour. 14 hours at 2 milliamps. Okay. I suppose we could see what its current state of charge is. Three point seven six volts. That's pretty much full. That's good. Okay, what else is on there? I assume that there's probably some stuff on the back side of that board. Let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, there's many many things back there. Okay. There, that makes it easier. So down on here, I'm guessing this is just buttons and uh, the display over probably some kind of a serial bus. And the interesting stuff is happening here. And yeah, there is a VCC TX and RX going out to this thing. Okay. Um, there is the obvious brains of the operation there is the current shunt so and then some little passives on both sides of it there's a capacitor across it some other capacitors and resistors there going into the measuring chip um and basically just some some uh, very basic components over here a couple of transistors some of those little uh melf diodes that everybody hates because they bounce all over the place and fall on the floor um yeah so i guess the only thing really to look into is that guy there which says v9261f well that wasn't all that hard to find vengo five volt power supply wide range three to five point five volts which is what the battery's doing Internal reference, so there's a reference, a 1.188 uh, volt reference inside it that it measures things across. 
It's crystal frequency between 6.5. Okay, so it can take a couple of different fairly common crystals to uh, to run it. That's uh, handy. It can handle a, a current transformer and shunt resistor. Hmm, we're only using a shunt resistor on this one. Okay. Okay, uh, voltage RMS metering error, typically 1% current metering typically one percent okay so we will keep that in mind 0.01 uh, hertz error on the frequency that's reasonable and again it can handle any of the world's uh, uh, power line frequencies between 40 and 70 hertz oh it claims to be able to measure temperature i haven't seen that in the menus maybe they're not implementing it in this one and there's what's going on on it. this tx and rx it'll be using to talk to the uh the buttons and uh, display. There's its reference voltage. Negative and positive inputs for voltages. So it looks like it's rectifying the voltage to talk to it, probably. If it's calling them negative and positive. There we go. There is the block diagram. Current input and the voltage inputs goes to the ADC and into the math compares it against the internal reference or you could I guess supply an external reference probably there's a temperature sensor inside yeah pretty much what you would expect from a device like this I guess I'll just put this guy back together and then we will uh, see if we can play with it a little bit I get everything in alignment there Normally, you wouldn't want to do that, obviously. Okay, it's all back together. Now we can do a few tests on it. I'm going to use my Fluke 289. And when I say mine, I mean borrowed from work. Um, as my reference. And we'll just compare against this guy. And I've got a kind of a janky little thing set up here to plug it into. If you don't know what you're doing with this stuff, don't do it. That's as close to the disclaimers I'm going to get. So the first test that we'll do is just to see how accurate the AC, the voltage is. 122.0, 122.697. That's close enough for me within, what is that, within half of a volt. That's pretty reasonable. 60 hertz it's saying 60.005 oh yeah that's close enough for that all right uh what's next current i guess that's the main reason that i got this in the first place okay i've changed up the setting a little bit i've got the uh the fluke in series now with the feed to this meter and i've got my good old I don't even know how old this thing is. My good old amp probe that I used to use back in my live sound days. Um, I, I don't happen to have my, uh, my fluke clamp meter handy, so I'm just going to use this guy instead. It's not going to be all that precise, and it's mostly just in here for fun. I'll set that to amps and coincidentally power factor. I guess we need a load. Um... How about a 60 watt incandescent light bulb? So we're showing half an amp there, 0 0.506, we're going 0.5146 here. That's pretty damn close. Next one's going to be this uh, 12 watt uh, dollar store uh, LED light. So what do we have here? 97 milliamps there and 110 milliamps there. That's a little bit further out, but not bad. Let's try it at a higher load though. Okay, the higher current uh, test that I've got is my electric space heater, which has two settings, 750-ish and 1500 watts. So let's go. There's the 750 watt setting. 
Now, as it heats up, as the heating elements heat up, you should see the uh, current rise, and you can a little bit down here. We're approximately four amps. And realistically, for what this thing is designed to do, that's precise enough, four and a half amps. Um, but 4.2, 4.3, again, that's easily within 1% or probably less, actually. Just gonna wait for it to stabilize, and then I'll, uh, do a quick math again it's within one percent let's try it on 1500 watts so here we are creeping up uh, eight and a half nine amps i gotta be a little bit careful because this guy's fused at 10 amps but again nine point f yeah a couple hundred milliamps difference for what I'm doing, that's close enough, and I'm going to drop that down before I pop the fuse on this thing. But yeah, this is all easily within 1%, and I'm pretty pleased about that. And my electric heater, even though the motor is inductive, most of the load is, uh, is resistive, so of course it's showing a 1.00 power factor. So yeah, now that it's kind of stabilized, look at that's close enough for anything I'm going to want to do. Should I trust the wattage measurement, or should I actually do the math on it? 7 point... Mm, time. So there's the wattage calculation, and again, that's easily within 1%, which is all close enough. So I'm actually pretty happy with this guy starting to get a little warm down here yeah that's uh that's fairly pleasing and this this old boy is still close enough for the sort of usage that it's put to and actually the amperages we're dealing with are way at the low end of what it's designed for it's it's the sort of a thing that an electrician would carry and it can handle up to a thousand amps so down in the single digits, it's probably not all that precise, but it's perfectly fine for what it's, uh, what it's designed for. And I just like the look of this nice old boy. Don't you? Anyway, um, where was it? Yeah, back to this guy. So I'm pretty pleased. Let's unplug this. I'm pretty pleased at how, uh, how close this thing is to a much more expensive piece of test equipment. And I know that I can trust it to be within 1% of reality, which is most of what the whole point of this, uh, this video was. I hope you, uh, found that interesting. Um, I found it informative, of course. Uh, to, uh, if you got any comments or questions down in the description below, I'll put a link to the uh, mailbag where I opened this up somewhere and uh, yeah I will talk to you later oh uh, yeah uh, somebody's gonna ask uh, this is uh, Turk Brewing's roundabout English dark mild ale